In this Excel video, I will demonstrate the round functions in Microsoft Excel. So here at the left, we have some numbers, and you can see that there's way too much exactness in these numbers, way too many decimal points. So how could we simply round these numbers to an integer? Now, some of you may be thinking, why don't you just select a number, go to the Home tab, and look in the Number group, and then decrease the number of decimals shown. If I do that, look, it just says 135. But the catch is, this cell does not really have the number 135 in it. When you select the cell, up here on the formula bar, you see the real truth. That's one thing that's great about the formula bar. It always shows you the actual contents of the cell. So you can see this is not just 135, it still has those decimals in place. And so if I add the contents of this cell to the contents of another cell, those decimals will come into play and be added. All we're doing here is changing the formatting of the number. So I'm going to undo that. I'll just hold Control and tap Z several times to get back to the way it was. Now let's try rounding using Excel functions. So I've clicked here on cell C3, and I'll type equals round, and you can see our four round functions appear. And you can click on each one to get a little description from Excel. But I'm gonna start just with a simple round function. I'll put in the left parenthesis. Excel is now asking for the number, and I could type in the number, or I could type in the cell reference, B3, or I could just click on it. Any of those three options will work just fine. Next, I'll put in my comma, because I am required to now put in this second argument, the number of digits that I want to have after the decimal point. So if I put 2 here, put in my right parenthesis, and tap Enter, I get the number rounded and to two decimal places, two numbers to the right of the decimal point. Now if I want to, I could select the cell C3 and double click on the autofill handle to apply that same formula all the way down my spreadsheet. Now if I click on C3 again, I can go up to the formula bar to easily change this formula. I could have said one decimal place, tap enter and I just get one. I can apply that down the spreadsheet. I could have said five decimal places or I could have just put in zero decimal places. Tap enter on the keyboard and now it's rounded to an integer. Now if you look closely, it follows the typical rounding conventions. If the decimal part of the number is below five, then it's rounded down. If it's five or up, it's rounded up. So you can see this number was rounded up and this number was rounded down. Okay, next let's look at the round down function. Let's do the same exact formula, except this time use round down. So I'll type in round down. Excel explains what it is. Round down will round a number down toward zero. So equals round down, left parenthesis. I'm going to select B3 as the number. I'll put in comma and the number of digits. We're going to keep that at zero. Right parenthesis, tap enter. And I still get 135. But if I double click on the autofill handle, you'll see some slightly different results. So in the case of B4, 78.76, in column C, that was rounded up to 79. In column D, it was rounded down to 78. Because I used the round down function, it doesn't matter how close this number was to 79. That doesn't matter. It wasn't 79, so it was rounded down to the integer. Let's try round up and see how that works. I bet you can guess. Equals round up. Round up will round a number up away from zero. Left parenthesis, I'll select B3, comma, number of digits, zero. Right parenthesis, tap enter. I get 136, and I'll double click on the autofill handle to apply the formula down the spreadsheet. And it did exactly what you would have expected. The results are different than what I got in column C with the round function and column D with the round down function. When I used the round up function, Every number that had a decimal and then numbers after it was rounded up to the next whole number, the next integer. So 909, 181, 639, it worked every time to round up to the next whole number. Our final round function in Microsoft Excel is a little trickier. It's called mround. Let's type it in and Excel will define what it does. mround returns a number rounded to the desired multiple. So I'll put in my left parenthesis. What's the number? I'm still going to use B3, comma, 
And then what's the multiple? I'm going to put the number 5. Let's take a look at this. So I put in the right parenthesis, tap enter. It looks like I got the exact same results as column C and column D. But if I apply this down the spreadsheet by double clicking on the autofill handle, you'll see some very different results. What's happening here is Excel is looking at the number in question and is rounding it either up or down until it hits a multiple of 5. If you remember, we put in 5 here. So with this number, it was easy to round down to get to a multiple of 5. For this one, it was easier for Excel to round up to 80 to get to a multiple of 5. With this number, it was easier for Excel to round down to 910 to get a multiple of 5. So you can play around with this mround function if you want to learn more about how it works. You could put in 2 or 3 as the multiple. Let's see what happens there. If I click on cell F3, double click on the autofill handle, it copies it down, and the numbers are adjusted. These numbers are now being rounded up or down to the nearest number that's a multiple of 3. We could even try changing it to 0. Let's try that. I bet you can guess what's going to happen. When I autofill that number down, all of the numbers turn to 0. Why? Because the only multiple of 0 is 0. I'm going to undo that. But in this video, we've looked at four round functions that we have in Microsoft Excel. These will come in handy as you use Excel more and more. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider clicking the thanks button below the video. Or you could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. 